Today's episode is brought to you by Carbonite. Should you start your company with a business incubator? Coming up. I'm Jay Adelson, and I'm the founder and chairman of Revision 3. I've started and built a number of companies. My goal in this show is to pass on some of the knowledge from my experiences to you, the budding entrepreneurs, and hopefully leave you with some words of wisdom. Today's question comes from Victor in New York who asks, I love your show. I had to say that. I'm starting an internet venture. Should I use a business incubator to seed fund my company? Victor, the idea of using a business incubator um, is pretty straightforward. If you use one of these structures, you're getting some amount of talent, you know, economies of scale that the incubator brings to bear uh, in addition to the money. So instead of just giving you, say, $25,000 to go try doing this yourself, theoretically the incubator has some resources. It might be a more technical incubator, which might, might mean that it has folks who understand the engineering side. It might have business people, it might have accountants, it might have CEO types, it might have all sorts of connections that will help you succeed. Um, I do think that it's rare that these incubators completely work to that level uh, of increasing your chance of success. Really great product is usually what leads to success on these startups. And so, you know, the question is who, what incubator uh, are you considering? And I guess the, the secondary question is, what makes you think that your business would be accepted by the incubator? Most of these uh, structures require sort of an application process. I know like Y Combinator and others actually uh, filter their probably thousands of potential startup applicants down to a very small number that they actually incubate. And then out of those, um, the, the beauty is again, you have all the advantages of the incubator and theoretically it also accelerates the time for you to execute on your prototype and maybe, maybe you've already got a prototype or execute on your launch. So can you actually get into one of these incubators? My favorite incubators, the ones that I think are, are the most interesting, are the ones that are extremely tuned to a specific market. Meaning that you, say, have an interest in green tech, or you have an interest in, say, um, mobile applications, or e-commerce, or, or something. Look for an incubator that actually brings resources that are very specific to your interests. These generalist incubators, I mean, how can they be big enough to have the levels of expertise that you need specific to your organization? Here in Silicon Valley, there are some exceptions to that rule. I know I mentioned Y Combinator before, and there's a number of others. Um, often, because there's just so many uh, businesses of a particular type, like mobile apps or social media companies or what have you, that you're going to, by definition, have a lot of expertise within that incubator just because it's so concentrated here. But in general, businesses are, di are diverse. So find one that actually has um, that kind of expertise. Another thing to consider is the financial structure of an incubator. Incubators usually have a flat percentage that they take of your company as part of the deal. Um, so for what is really a relatively small amount of cash, sometimes as low as $5,000, sometimes as much as $50,000 worth of actual investment capital placed in your business, they're taking usually around 10 or 15% of your company. The other thing to consider about incubators, and I know this is true around the Bay Area, is most of these incubators are structured to get you to a point of funding, a Series A funding round. So all of their advice all of their product guidance and their business guidance ultimately lead you to a business model that still requires yet another funding round. And they often seed, uh, or I should say feed, these venture capitalists with their businesses and theoretically increase the chances of you closing this A round. There's still a risk associated with that, but um, theoretically it's, it's easier to close. Now, be sure your business fits that structure. You're comfortable giving away portions of your business and you can't bootstrap it. You're comfortable with a business model that requires that you have venture funding. And remember, businesses that take venture funding, the expectation is sometimes as much as 100 times return on their investment after that Series A. So make sure that your business that you are passionate about fits that venture model before jumping into the incubator uh, system. 
The last thing I want to mention um, is that there are some incubators that take full ownership of the company. In other words, it's not really uh, so much as a seed investment as it is to say, hey, we'll provide you all the resources. You'll be able to execute on the, on the build of your product. We technically own it. You'll have equity in it, um, but you'll have equity in uh, the mother company or the mother incubator, which could at some point sell it off. Maybe we sell it to Twitter or sell it to Facebook or something like that. Um, I know that there are a number of models like this or various adjustments on that structure. Betaworks is one that I like and others like that, um, which really take a more of a substantial piece and really um, are, are driving uh, the, the cooperation between the different incubated businesses at a level that independent investments that aren't completely owned don't do. So it's, so it's an interesting alternative model and see whether or not you might fit that a little bit better. Anyway, in a minute we'll talk about that incubation um, amount of funding and what the alternatives are and maybe how to prepare a little bit for, for an incubator. But first let's thank our sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by Carbonite. Carbonite protects your pictures and your other files from a computer crash, fire, theft, or when you accidentally delete a file by automatically and continually backing up your files and keeping them securely off-site. You'll never have to remember to back up again. Whether you have one or two computers at home or several computers at your small business, Carbonite is the better backup plan. Over one million customers trust Carbonite to protect their home and small business computer files with plans starting at just $59 a year. Start your free trial at Carbonite.com with the offer code ASKJ and you'll get two bonus months if you decide to buy. That's Carbonite.com and the offer code for two bonus months is ASKJ. All right, so the alternative is that you go find an angel investor with, who gives you some seed funding. You know, I, I would really wonder whether or not it makes sense to do this always by default. And the reason is just because, first of all, the experience is amazing to try and build something like this on your own. But secondly, I've rarely talked to people who have gone through the incubation process who have said to me that it would have been impossible to do on their own. So really, the, you know, in that, in that situation, the reason to go uh, with angel funding instead is because, well, the experience, the fun, and also the, uh, you know, the, the opportunity of developing a brand independent of any kind of baggage that the incubator brings with you. The flip side is also true if you want to reduce your risk. I mean, if you're a YC company, you know, it has a certain brand associated with it. If you want to go with that brand, and to some extent, always be associated with that brand, forever, then going with an incubator isn't really a bad idea. Now, as far as preparing for an incubator, you know, these, these big pitch fests where they, you know, have 100 people pitch and so forth, um, you know, really it's a, a lot about flash. It's a lot about being able to really prove that your idea is flipping awesome in a very short period of time. If you think of a typical VC meeting, where you're going in there for a half hour to 45 minutes, you can build your pitch up, you've got time to really sort of explain the market and go deep. You know, I think that it's more of a condensed version of that in uh, an incubator uh, pitch fest, and you really need to be prepared, sort of like that 30 second elevator speech, to really deliver why this is phenomenal uh, and why your idea is um, unparalleled in a very short period of time. So focus on that brevity uh, in preparation for such a meeting. Okay, thanks for joining us. Please send your questions. We'd love to see them to askj at revision3.com. And of course, follow me on Twitter at, at jadelson. We'd love to see you there. Um, thanks again for joining us, and until next time.